Following one of my previous videos on five tips to boost your KDA, I received a comment I responded to briefly on my last live commentary from the user OG No God, mentioning the three playstyles they observed. I mentioned in my live commentary that while I felt bad for leaving out their point, I stood on the basis that I didn't want to tell new players how they should or should not play. However, in the live commentary, I received another comment from the user at DimitriD147, saying that it would be better to refer to the playstyles as the core three, aggressive, passive, and passive aggressive. I responded to their comment before this video, I'll let you know, but I think it'd be best if I made a video on the topic because I think it's something worth a discussion. Hey everyone, I'm Rum, and welcome to today's video, Battle Bit Playstyles, and how we should categorize them. The comments for today's videos, there will be two, is from Dimitri because it's what inspired me to make the video in the first place, and OG No God now being in two of my videos for beginning the conversation. So I want to say thank you for the comments, and let's get right into the video. For those who didn't watch my live commentary, that's fine by the way, I hope you enjoy this video. One of the brief things I mentioned is the fact that in my 5 tips video is that I left out playstyles and how I felt bad for doing so. I will say this on the topic though, if you're new and don't want to change your playstyle, that's great and the video still helps, but it's still important to know the other playstyles and how you should interact with them. Something that I will take a big step back from is the fact there's hundreds of playstyles because I believe what I said was too broad. Dimitri gave me an example that I agree with. If I want to push with a sledgehammer, that doesn't mean it's a different playstyle to someone pushing with a gun. And they're right. At the end of the day, both examples are both aggressive playstyles with different executions. So why am I taking a big step back on my stance? Because I received feedback, people left their thoughts on my comments, and I listened. However, when I realized that there might be three playstyles, I realized that there was a small mistake with one of the playstyles. I'll get to that a bit later, but let's talk about the two that I agree with first. The aggressive playstyle seems to be most people's favorite playstyle, and I can't blame them since it is one of my favorite playstyles as well. And that's because it is really fun to run around an objective going on killing sprees. There's more to this playstyle, however. Since all classes can use it, each one interacts with it differently. I'll explain how three of the classes use this playstyle first. The Assault is the best candidate for the aggressive playstyle, obviously, since they have ways to breach a site vertically with their grappling hook and directly with C4s and sledgehammers. The Engineer is another example of a class meant for this playstyle, using his high fire rate guns to deal with close quarter combat and his rocket launcher to deal with far range threats, enemies, or even to open up a wall from far away to let you push through. And the last class that requires a bit more explanation, the support. I'm sure you might be confused, but I want to explain myself a bit before I delve into the other playstyles. The support is good for holding down objectives, spraying down enemies, and pushing with the team. More recently, this class has gotten some love. With the addition of battle rifles and probably one of my favorite weapons in the game, the RPK. Something to add on to this, the support has one of the best features for high level offense as well, instant building. I know it sounds lame, like this isn't Fortnite or something, but being able to slam down builds to climb onto higher perches, catch your enemies off guard with a flank, or otherwise creating a new angle to abuse makes the support an amazing class to use offensively. And don't get me wrong, the support is still a slow, sluggish class, however, with the amount of grenades you can throw and the ability to pre-fire any anywhere you want, to say this class is weak on the offense is currently wrong. Now this hasn't always been the case. If you watch some older clips of the support, trudging through maps is a hassle. Your armor felt like it was destroyed in a single bullet and your utility for the team felt negligible. But with the constant buffs to this class, I think the devs did the support well in making him a viable offense and defensive class that anyone can pick up. Can the support run through the open and live? Probably not. But to be honest, now most of the other classes can't either anymore. Since many of the weapons that were previously weak at longer ranges have since been buffed. If you disagree, that's fine. And let me know what you think of the point in the comments below or what other classes I should have added to this playstyle. 
But like I said before, all classes can do all play styles. It just is a matter of different executions. The next play style we're going to be talking about is the passive play style, or what I would rather call it, the defensive play style. Why do I not like to call it passive? Because for the most part, the classes using this play style are sometimes getting more kills than those using the aggressive play style. Passive shouldn't be used to describe what these guys do best, and that's hold down the line to protect objectives from far away or from inside. I really only have two classes meant for this defensive play style that being the recon and the support. I'll go over the support first. The support makes another appearance because of the aforementioned instant builds, but the support also receives some of the best tools to deal with a rushing squad. The anti-grenade system, or trophy system as most people know it, and the barbed wire building. What's common practice now is teams will have an assault class run flashbangs and spam them through different corners on a site, leaving your team blinded and vulnerable to the incoming assault. But with a support who takes the trophy system, those flashbangs no longer work. Your team can no longer be blinded, and if your support places barbed wire in front of the entrance to an objective that the team is watching, that's important by the way, well, those enemies are good as dead. Because one, you take forever to go through it, and two, it takes forever to clear. So they either have to deal with the slow and die trying to push, or stand still to take it down, Either way, the push is deterred by just one class. Next is the recon. I was initially hesitant to say the recon was better at defense than offense since the nerfs for the character have been drastic. I want to say for my recon brothers out there, I am so sorry for you guys. I asked for nerfs in my other videos, but damn, they really killed you guys. But besides the point, I added them here over the other two options because the sniper is a great class that deals with opponents who are better at fighting clusters of enemies like the engineer or assault than those who are good at dealing with one-on-one -on -one far range fights like other recons. For one example, in Wakistan, the recon is one of the most hated classes to deal with and it's not because the class is OP or because they're great at taking over objectives. No, it's because the class is good at controlling the map. A good recon on most maps can further establish control, and more often than not, can see and stall an enemy push before they even start. Now, it is true they lack in close quarter combat, but the pressure they have from far range is what keeps this class strong and defensive. Now to the next playstyle, what the two comments called passive aggressive. Like I said before, I don't like the word passive for this game. I guess I should explain why. Passive means to not fight, not play safer, not fight less. It means to not fight at all. Passive aggressive is something else, yes, but it makes it confusing for new players to understand when you say just play a passive aggressive playstyle. So, what should you call it? Well, like other games, it should be classified as a supportive playstyle. With that being said, just because you're a supportive player doesn't mean you're not getting kills or fighting with your team. It also doesn't mean you shouldn't take out your gun to help. It means you're playing with your team, pushing with them, reviving the people around you, opening sites around you, etc. And the best class for this is the medic, uh, of course. Something to note about the medic is that they used to be the go-to class to pick up and play when you wanted to use an aggressive playstyle. I mention this because, at least in my opinion, the medic class has become one of the least aggressive classes because of the bandage changes. Since the medic can't self-heal with bandages and is instead relegated to only healing themselves with the medkit. This is an important point because in the middle of a fight, having 50 HP instantly restored after a point in time lets you play more aggressively than sitting and waiting for around 5 to 10 HP every second. Not only that, but the medic is put into a worse situation with their medkit out than any other class with their bandages out, since with bandages, your last equipped weapon will always come out once you let go of 3 or whatever bind you have. While the medkit 
you have to equip and are forced to have it out without being able to swap at the release of a bind. Does this make it a bad class? Not at all. In fact, I think the devs made the class more aligned with what their original idea for the game was, a class meant to be played in a way to support the team when the enemies are busy dishing out too much damage and you need to get as many people back up in order to keep fighting. This doesn't mean the medic is the only one good support class, since not only the support, but also the engineer are great classes to support your team. The engineer is here because of their high explosive and long range weapons that allow them to deal with the recons and with vehicles. But even with these three playstyles, I still feel like we're neglecting a big part of the game. A part that the devs even made changes to the game for. Vehicles. When I talk about the vehicle playstyle, I want to say I don't mean the people who spawn on a car to drive it to the next point. I mean the people who spawn in a tank or a helicopter and drive around the entire map getting kills and going back to spawn to resupply after they used all the ammo they have. I want to talk about this playstyle since it's a common enough occurrence that the devs actually made squads specifically dedicated to each vehicle. I know I sound a bit nitpicky, but if you really want to use vehicles, you must play differently than the other playstyles. Is this nitpicky? Probably, but I think it's valid enough to warrant its own section in this video. Unfortunately, I don't have enough experience with this playstyle to divulge into it much. But I will say it is a joy to be in a tank with someone who knows how to use it, or in a heli with someone who wants to take over all objectives. From what I know, the best class to use this playstyle is, is Engineer due to the repair tool equipment that they have, which helps them heal up their vehicles when they're just too far away from spawn. So we have four designated playstyles, each with different executions, but we haven't gone into how each of them interact with each other yet. I'd like to talk about how they interact with others in the next part of this video. So with that being said, thank you all for watching. I'm Rum, see you next time. Bye bye.